G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Mutant's Lever Action Rifle with bullets exploding for area damage as a secondary effect. So a legendary lineup of middling proportions. Obviously the explosive is always fun to have because bullets exploding is fun, but the Mutant's prefix legendary effect really isn't doing a whole lot for this thing. You see, it only is 10%, doesn't matter how many mutations you do have, it's always capped at 10%, which I guess is better than some other things like suppressors, which is kind of useless to be honest so at least it's doing something here and there you don't have a major debuff during the day like you would with a nocturnal so it's kind of just there in the middle stuck between shit and good so if they happen to change this thing to scale off the mutations you could actually get a really really powerful weapon out of this maybe if it's 10 percent per mutation it'd be quite as powerful as bloodied even more if you've got adrenal reaction and nerd rage going with it now that would be meta changing so anyways, this thing, Hardened Receiver, um, True Barrel, True Stock, Medium, Scope, fucking Suppressor, and nice paint on it to make it look better, I guess. I want to get my money's worth out of this um, Atom Store purchase, so all of my lever guns are looking like this now. It's an okay weapon looking here, doing 123 damage, and if we unequip this weapon, we can actually see how much damage we actually get. I've got a bladed one here, and you'll see if I've equipped this weapon, this thing also appears to do 123, and that's basically because the mutant's prefix actually makes every single thing boosted by 10%, so if you want your grenades to be extra powerful as you've got the weapon, yeah, you can actually do that. So I found that out, and that was kind of interesting, but no one seemed to take notice of that. So I'll do away with that blade lever action after this, because it's currently putting me over capacity. And we'll plug in some of these rifleman perks to boost this thing's damage, shall we? And we've also got tank killer and uh, concentrated fire, because that's um, usage with this is okay, I suppose. And um, tank killer for passing through some of that armor to make sure the tanky guys aren't too tanky. Demo expert, bloody mess. And now we're doing 246 damage, unequip that. And we're doing an extra 20 damage as opposed to the extra 11, so yeah, it's not all that impressive, but I'll make it work somehow. Alright, night has fallen upon us, so I've just done the old trick with uh, Covert Operative and uh, Mr. Sandman. Equip Mr. Sandman first, then Covert Operative, and you can have your sneak attack criticals doing this. Wham! 3.75 times damage. And that again. Ooh, we didn't actually kill that guy. That's a shame. But throughout our... Dr uh, okay, that was a little bit delayed. There might be a bit of lag in this server, I think. But we'll persevere anyway. We seem to be hitting these guys for over 700 anyway. Which is an instant kill on any old Super Mutant Warlord. Probably should have reloaded there when I had that spare time. And even if we reach out a little bit with this, it's not going to be a problem. Unless we, you know, miss the headshots. Um, we've got to shoot them in the head when they're, when they're that far away. Because our weapon damage is cut in half if we decide to be even just a millimetre out of this weapon's designated range zone. And that's how the gunplay works in this. It's not a slow drop-off like you'd see in um, other games trailing off to a minimum damage at range like in a Battlefield game. Rather, you just do half damage if you're outside of the weapon's thing. And... So, 363, so, yeah, I mean, the, it's it's only an extra 20 points of damage, which is not going to be night and day, to be honest. I actually have had this sitting in my inventory rating to go for ages, and the reason it took me so long to get to the bloody thing was basically because um, I just didn't have the suppressor unlock, so I, you know, grinded out a few screws, springs, and whatever you need to actually make lever guns. Obviously, the plans help to... And just uh, got a couple of these made up using Super Duper, scrapped a bunch, and the suppressor was the last attachment I ever got. And I'm pretty sure I filled out all of them. Um, speaking of attachments, Prime Receivers, probably wondering why I'm not using that. It actually does the exact same damage as a Hardened Receiver. So in terms of shooting stuff other than Scorch Beast, it, we're on par with Prime Damage, which is pretty damn good. And 363 again, barely taking a hit. I'm going to get out of that truck before it actually explodes on me, then we'll take a hit. Okay, so the gameplay here is going to be very, very similar to what you saw just outside. So I guess the burden's on me to make this interesting somehow. Do I do more Wasteland karaoke? Also, I'm pretty sure I heard the dogs die of a heart attack. So, yeah, for some reason, sometimes the spawns are a bit weird because it'll be deceptive. You'll have the spawns outside, but when you actually get yourself inside the place, you'll notice that everything is dead or in goo piles or... 
yeah, that, or meat piles would be strewn about, so someone would have cleared there. Sometimes I feel like people don't bother clearing out the outside if they don't see any legendaries that just sprint right in, which is whatever. I guess you can do that. I'm gonna sit back and call you a fuckwit for doing that. You play the game how you like it, which is my new outlook on things. Um, sometimes I would just get salty and start ranting at players that run around with uh, excavator power armor. I call it Minecraft power armor because it's fucking hilarious. Um, and it all rises, but honestly, that ain't me anymore. And I'll tell you why. Um, it's basically because I got... I got exposed to the very extreme of that thinking, where you basically bag out players for their playstyle. I got exposed to the very extreme of that, special thanks to, um, old mate's subscriber base for showing me what that kind of fucking toxicity does. And you know what? I looked at that and thought, fuck no, I don't want, I don't want to sound like that, I don't want to come off like that. That's, that's outrageously snobbish and also makes you look like a complete fucking idiot. It's a video game, it's not fucking life or death, let people play how they want. So, with that outlook, um, and also the fact that, um, I've been slowly caring less and less about this game since all the bugs just keep happening and everything, um... Um, I don't think I can quite as be as salty as I was. I think a lot of the passion has just gone away. Um, because, I, I don't know. I still like playing this game, but I'm not caring as much as I did. Just because this game is continually let me down time and time again throughout its bugs. So, um, I'm just holding on for something like private servers and mod support so I can enjoy this game how I, you know, would like it without having to deal with other players just in the game and would, you know, just building my gear and doing whatever I want. If that's Furious Explosive, that'd be fun. No, it's a Furious Hitman's. Well, that's okay, I guess. I'm gonna blow up that robot because he decided to take away my sneak attack crit powers, but it's been quite a cruisy run here. Um, I'm not even sure if we've been shot yet. The little bit of damage on our health bar was from some radiation that we passed by. Um, on the way inside, but it appears other than that, nothing much has uh, taken a toll on that bar, so once again, lever action rifle proving to be a dangerously good stealth weapon. Um, just make sure if you're, um, if you're using this in the middle of ghouls that you have your escape routes clearly planned out. Um, especially if you're using a bloodied one. I actually managed to get a player killed before. I was I was recording, he, he runs in and tries to, you know, start taking all of these kills. And then I, I, I basically aggroed the ghouls and set up the consequences that he dies. And I laughed in his face. That's fucking hilarious. That's like the best PvP kill I ever got. And I didn't even deliver the final blow. Ha, I'll pinch that. Oh good, I'm over capacity now. Yeah, this is what sucks about wearing chameleon armor. None of it is pocketed. It's all um, ultra light, so I get extra AP bonuses and um, and uh, what's it called? Extra sneak bonuses because I believe the lighter your armor is, your the better you you are at sneaking, which is good for a chameleon armor because it's all made for sneaking. So everything is still shadowed. Still, um, if I'm in the shadows right now, I'm guessing it just works whether it's dark or not. Um, or if you're in an interior and there's low lighting like in this situation, I think Shadowed is helping me out a bit. If I remember correctly from Fallout 4, I think it adds plus 5% to your sneak chance per limb and 10 on the torso? Okay, I might get that wrong, but it definitely feels like I'm getting that because they didn't see me at all during that. That's the power of chameleon armor. Alright, have the tools spawned? They appear to have not spawned. What? What are you doing in here? Um... Okay. A robot in here for some reason. I guess I'll kill him and uh, probably switch servers then. Oh, there's an another one. Yeah, sometimes the spawns bug. I've seen this place overrun by iBots and also the Commibots too, so I guess this is just another one of these bugs. For some reason, the gamers confuse ghouls with protectrons and um, put three here, and there's just a red roach goo pile. This is a very sad White Springs run today. Okay, I'll be back. Ah, uh, yes. Swan is out for his nightly stroll. 1400 damage. A little bit less. Hmm. Maybe I wasn't in range with that. Or maybe I was. 
killed him in three shots anyway, which is, yeah, it's pretty good. All right, well, whilst it's still night, we'll just murder some more of these crabs. Ooh, I missed your face. That's better. So now we're hitting him for... F oh, oh, he's learned the Segway powers. That's like the equivalent of a ghoul sleeper right there. And there's another one. He's actually moving like he ought to, though, so good for him. He's learned basic movement. There we go. 1,600 damage I saw with that headshot, so adrenaline doing in good. See, I guess... In a way, that the mutant's effect works as a kind of a base multiplier that can make, you know, it's not going to make a huge difference, but it will make a difference that is significant enough to do a little bit more damage here and there. It's not, it's not world changing, but it's okay. Delayed reaction, much Mrs. Queen. Now let me shoot you in the face. Straight 1k damage, apparently. There we go. I think Zero would be happy with that kill there. So, four shot of the. five shot of the queen. Did something to the queen and killed her with a bullet or seven. And 375 damage. So, with that tiny little bit of adrenal reaction, where. you know, we've got enough damage to deal with basically anything that we've seen so far, which is uh, pretty damn solid. I guess we can keep going. Moving straight on to Scorch Beast hunting. Let's start off just by killing a few of these dudes, I suppose. And if you're sitting still, makes you an easy target. Anyways, so I heard one of the bastards spawn, so hopefully we can pull a few spawns out of this. There you are, mate. So we'll just uh, start lighting him up. And unlike the um, explosive quad, uh, what's it called, harpoon gun? I mean, just like it. It seems to resist the damage extremely well, which is, I don't know. I don't know why it does that. Also, nice little teleport in there. That was subtle. So we'll just keep on getting some adrenaline damage. Maybe it's a range thing, because you can see that the health bar jumps right up again. If, yeah, okay, so I, I'm missing out on a lot of damage here. I'm being bugged out of quite a lot of damage. And maybe it's because the game's remembering, hey, Scorch Beast is supposed to be more resistant to this, or rather, he's aggroed by something. Okay, that's the case. That's what's happening over there. See, so if we shoot this Scorch Beast, even at this range, we're doing better damage. So, okay, so something is taking my aggro. I'm guessing it's going to be a Milerk, so... We'll, we'll find out what's drawing this fucker's aggro. We'll, we'll kill that so we can do better against him and his friends. Hopefully that one doesn't get involved. No, oh, he's totally involved with it now. Oh, it's a Mr. Gutsy. Well, looks like we're killing some robots th in this as well. Don't like being robbed of sneak attack criticals like this. It's less frustrating than players rocking up though, because you can't just kill other players to get them out of your hair. Cheap move, Mr. Scorch Beast. So here's basically what it's like without the use of sneak attack criticals. You can see that it takes a lot longer to kill things. Wow, the the gutsies actually did a pretty good job. You know the. The Ballistic Gutsies are in proportion a lot stronger than the ones with lasers, so the ones with the the big guns on them, I'm not, I'm not actually sure which round they're firing, but those guys, they can actually take a Scorch Beast if there are enough of them, and unlike Scorch Beast, they tend to spawn in groups of four or five, and now we get better damage. See, that's what we wanted out of our um, thing. And now we're back into stealthy mode, so we can go back to one-shotting stuff like we were before. There we go. Just a cheeky 1500 damage or so on that guy. Nothing too major, I suppose. Let's quickly reload this bad boy. See if we can't swing around to the 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 hole, the Satan hole. See if Satan will give us another fucking bat to slaughter. Give it a wide berth up first. Reload this thing. Go back into sneaky sneaky mode. Question is, will it pop up? Yes, it will. And we're straight into danger, so we're getting a lot less damage than we ought to, because sometimes stealth is bugged. You might have noticed how I've just been going into danger and caution, just like that. And I think it's the chameleon armor trying to do its best to keep me hidden, but for some reason, sometimes Scorch Beasts are just a lot more inconsistently um, aware than other things. And I guess it might be because echo location and nice fucking trade kill. Well, at least I killed him before... He could get any advantage on me with that leg, with that arm cripple, I should say. 
And yeah, that's basically what it's like against a pack of Scorched Beasts. Mutants can't really carry this thing without using stealth. So basically it's the build doing all that much. And I'll take your guts for glue, thank you. Okay, so this is like probably the 10th time I've tried to switch a server to get some ghoul spawns. And you know what that means. This place is just going to be crawling with sleepers. Oh, there's one right off the bat. Oh, he's getting me. Bagger off. Go away. Oh, there's another one. Look out. Hit these guys in vats. Otherwise, you won't be able to hit them at all because their hitboxes are weird. And vats just seems to find the hitboxes because, I don't know. Is that a... Rad Roach, okay, better take you out before you start causing trouble, and nice, 1k damage, just whacking him there, and I don't think I've, uh, I'm pulling my punches a little bit, but it ain't gonna matter all that much if, um, yeah, okay, I'm missing out on 2.5 times sneak attack in terms of criticals, and they're so far away that we're in the blurry vision, hey Bethesda, listen up now, why have you brought back this depth of field thing, that's not good. Let me show you my... No, that's my perks. Don't look at those. They're bad, apparently. Um, let me show you my options menu, Bethesda. For some reason, you've brought back Depth of Field and everything looks terrible again. No thanks. Winter doesn't need glasses. She's got 20-20 vision, although maybe constantly putting herself in a state of radiation that leaves her 20% of the way to death is uh, that a number on her eyesight. They'll probably do a number on some other organs. Probably not your eyes, though. I'm not a radiation expert, so he even knows. Okay, looks like that sleeper has decided to start getting up and fighting, but it is too late for him. So a couple of goo piles in here. Nothing much I can do about that. I'm happy with the spawns that we did pull from this place. And I must have pulled all the spawns from upstairs because there's the manager trying to control the spawns for the ghouls. But um, apparently... He's, it's not working well for him. So if you decide to play aggressively, going from room to room, taking it one step at a time, and and finding a good escape path when you find that ghouls are overrunning you, is definitely what you want for a lever action rifle because you've got a you've got a semi decent rate of fire in terms of what it does. Or it's a sniper, so it's got the best rate of fire, but it's not really backed up well by its ammo capacity. You'll have to reload this thing very very quickly. Um, so, uh, fortunately, the reload bug has been fixed at this point. It was fixed yonks ago, but um, you can sort of get away with it. But, yeah. Not a terrible run against ghouls there. But like I was doing before, stealth is the kind of the major key. Like I was mentioning before with how I killed Old Mate using a bloodied um, lever gun. Make sure they don't get on top of you, and you should be okay. So keep on the move. Alrighty, so it appears the Train Yard Smash has provided us today with a, a bunch of glowing doggos, which, um, it's not going to be hard to kill these guys, because they've got no range attacks, and, um, even if they do evade our detection, um, they kind of stomp around when they move, so they're actually really hard, or easy to detect whilst they're running, and despite being doggos, you know, you know, they're characterized by their keen sense of smell and otherwise really good perception. They're not actually too hard to um, sneak from, which is kind of odd. Maybe if they, they could shake up the game a little bit by making Doggo's extra perceptive. I know that I know that Dogmate was. His perception stat was like 16 or something back in Fallout 4, like the companion version. I, I think it was something around like that. So I don't see why the Doggo is. Maybe because... Maybe because the nuclear fire melted their parts of the nose that would detect smells like that. Because honestly, they kind of look like ghoul dogs. That's all they are. So maybe that's why. But, you know, to make them a bit more of a challenge for a sneaky build and something for them to avoid more. Especially when it comes to super mutants. Because you want to prioritize the attack dogs if they can see past your um, stealth boy much better than the other mutants can. So yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea to me. I don't know about you. But anyways, that there was a mutant explosive lever action rifle. I'm really not keen on this weapon, but if you don't have a explosive lever action yourself, hit me up and I'll probably just give it to you for free because I don't want this thing taking up space in my inventory for much longer. Thank you very much for watching, guys.